In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of my fashion shoot inspired by Botticelli's Birth of Venus. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And every year I team up with photographer Chris Knight to put on the Timeless Workshop. Now in this workshop, we gain inspiration from the past to create modern interpretations. Sometimes we're inspired by paintings, other times we're inspired by movies and sculpture and so much more. And so each year it's really exciting because it's a challenge. What else can we look into from the past, be inspired by different artists and create something totally new? Because every year it's new concepts. And so this past year, I wanted to try finally something that I've always wanted to do, which is an image inspired by Birth of Venus by Botticelli. It's one of the most famous paintings of all time. And I actually saw it when I was in Florence and it was breathtaking. And there have been many different references throughout time, whether it's in movies or in fashion editorials. And so I wanted to do my own take. Now, in planning for this, there's a really key element, which is planning. How much of it did I want to do in post-processing? How much did I want to achieve in camera? What was I going to do for the styling? Would it be nude like Botticelli's Venus? Would I uh, have a prop of a shell or would I put that in in post? How would I achieve the background? And so I had to decide ahead of time what I needed to uh, have in front of my camera. All right, so where I began, I'm actually gonna take you behind the scenes, is I began by acquiring the background. What I did is I downloaded the original picture of Botticelli's Venus and then Chris helped me to uh, remove all of the people in it so that I could have a nice clean background. From there, I sent it off to a website, a company called Kate Backdrops. Kate Backdrops is a company where you can actually print out images on this like micro velvet, which is what I did here. And I, I made it large so that I could have a really dramatic frame. Uh, I had it shipped. It took a couple of weeks to arrive. And then I actually ordered the original one too small, which you can see on the ground. Uh, I ordered it much smaller and then it just, the subject wasn't going to fit as I held it up. So that was actually perfect because I could use it as the ground. Otherwise it would have had to figure out some other elements. So I stacked the two to give me background as well as the ground. Now you'll see the shell that's there. I rented it from a prop shop here in New York City, which is convenient that we actually have here. Um, I found in LA there were many of them and here in New York there was one of these shells. So I had to plan ahead and make sure that I had all of the elements I needed. This was something I was originally considering adding in post if I couldn't find it, maybe buying a shell and photographing it small, but it was much easier if I could actually have it in reality because the subject could be rooted in it and actually stand on it. The next element that I wanna talk about the production is the dress. The dress is a piece of fabric that I had a designer friend of mine make so that I could have some flowing movement. I do fine art nude editorials and I do fine art nude shoots, but that's not what I wanted out of this. I wanted this to be fashion rather than being an exact a replication of what you see in Botticelli's. Next up is the hair. Uh, uh, this particular model I photographed a few times. And so when I looked at Birth of Venus, of course, there's a long, beautiful reddish hair blowing across her chest and body. And so that's why I cast this model so that I could call back to the original. So I have all of those styling pieces working together. Okay, so let's talk about the lighting. First up is the main light source, which is to the right-hand side of the frame. It's a large umbrella with diffusion, which basically means a big soft light source. I could have used a soft box or a five foot octa box, but just big and soft into the right-hand side of the frame. And the reason I decided that is I looked at the original painting and you can see, here's a close up on that painting, that there is a soft light source to the right-hand side of the frame and her, the left-hand side of the face is a bit in shadow. So I wanted to emulate this feel. So that's why I decided the placement of the main light. Looking back at that close up again, there's quite a lot of fill to the shadows, right? They're not, they're not dark, they're not overly defined, which is why I added my second light, which is a medium umbrella with diffusion to the front of the frame. What this does is it allows me to lift up the shadows so that I would have a lot more detail and match the original painting. And then last but not least, I look back at the painting, particularly at her body. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of highlight on the left hip. That's just a little bit of separation, which to me is a rim light, which is why I added the final light that you see here to the back left-hand side of the frame, which is a one by four foot strip softbox. That's going to allow me to have that soft highlight that carves out her body, just like the painting. So I look to the painting, not only for the styling and the background and the hair and all of that, but also for the direction of the light. All right, just a couple more things before we move on to what was achieved in camera. I had one key element here. I used a real effects fan too. 
This is a specialty hair fan because in the Venus photo, the hair is moving and I wanted to match that. And then for my camera gear, I was using the Canon R5 and the Canon 24 to 105, which is my go-to studio lens combination. And my camera settings were pretty standard, F8 ISO 400. All right, so let's pop over and see what was captured in camera. So this is what the image looked like straight out of the camera. Her pose is elegant, a little bit of something called contraposto. Her hair is flowing beautifully. She's got glossy, beautiful skin. I've got the background looking great, but there's a few little issues. Uh, first of all, for some reason, I think it was shooting low. I shot it crooked. So the line of the background, the horizon, which is supposed to be straight was tilted. So I, I untilted it here. Uh, and then the floor didn't quite reach. So I knew I'd have to extend that in post. So what I did in post processing was a combination of fixing and extending the background and then color grading. There's only really one major fix I needed besides the background and that was fixing the hair. She had one hair sticking up on top I wanted to fix. And so you can see, I straightened it out, extended the background, and then I toned the photo. So if you look at the original painting, everything is very warm. And this is very common with paintings. Not only would the skin tone be warm, but over time they yellow and it becomes warmer. And that is absolutely one direction I could go. And in fact, I tried some color grading like that and, and I was very happy with it. But in the end, I wanted to take my own twist on it. I decided to go with a complementary color scheme. Her hair and the dress and the, the shell are all different variations of like a red or a pink, a desaturated red, but the background is a green. And so to get a complementary color, I decided to also make her skin tone a little bit of a green cyan so that the hair and the dress would pop and contrast against the green of the skin and the background. Typically, you don't want to add green to skin, but in this case, I think that it makes a really beautiful result because of the color harmony I chose. So I am very pleased with the final results of my interpretation of Birth of Venus. But as you can see, it takes a lot of planning. It's the background, the props, the model selection, the styling, the posing, the color grading, every single element working together. And of course, this means that I have to plan ahead. So sometimes amazing images aren't just something you take, but it's something that you make. Now, if you are inspired by this set or you like the idea behind Timeless and you wanna join both Chris and I on one of these workshops, this is something that we do every year and each year is brand new concepts. So you're going to want to visit learnwithlindsay.com and go to the workshop section to sign up because it always sells out. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction. If you wanna see the gear that I've used, be sure to check out the link in the description below. See you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.